So, I've got this massive chunk of metal here, which I've used to contain a fire for the last sort of five or six years. Um, it's massive, and the problem is with this, um, if you light a fire in here, obviously it could be a huge fire and it burn the whole lot down. Uh, but the good thing about having um, quite a wide um, diameter is that you can have a fire at one side, drag some of the coals off, and then you can actually use that um, heat from the coals to actually cook using your uh, Dutch oven or um, other methods of cooking with cast iron. Um, so really, it's perfect for in here, and obviously you can uh, control the size of the fire anyway, so it is absolutely spot on. Problem is, this is massive, so next job, I need to cut this down and cut a slither off this that I can utilise in the centre of this uh, yurt. Mark it out with a bit of chalk. Right, this is going to take some cutting. I've got a couple of metal discs, so I'm going to get through these, I'm sure. Right. too bad to be fair. I wouldn't want to get it wrong place though and have to cut it again. <laughs> Nightmare. Anyway, I've got a grinder. I'm just going to uh, take off all these sharp edges now. So we've got our fire pit. Let's just offer it up and see what it looks like. It's got some weight to it still. There we go then. Awesome, eh? <laughs> That's awesome, I love it. So to fit these posts in, what I'm gonna do, they don't quite go as they are. So I have to shave a tiny little bit off. So, fast this way using planer. So what I've done with this is um, just shaved off a little bit with the planer, um, just to make a circle fit inside a square. And that's the type of kid I've always been. I always make a, the circle smash into the square shape. Let's drop it in. <laughs> it don't fit. Take it round a quarter. And there we go. Awesome, eh? Solid. So, two posts in, 13 more to go. So what I'm going to do with these, I've left these obviously high and uh, it just allows me now to cut these off to whatever height I want this to sort of start at. So we can work that out um, once we get sort of some of the roof structure up and in place I can offer it down and then we can work out where to cut these off. So I'll get my lad on with uh, doing the rest of these posts um, using the planer. So <laughs> I'll have to give him his... Uh, safety briefing because um, this baby here has caused me a bit of a problem before because I once had it and I went to rotate it round and I stuck my little finger 
don't know if you can see how flat that is there but I stuck my little finger into the uh, moving blade and swear down just cut straight through the bone so I will show you a picture of that now So yeah, it's have an operation just to um, pull the skin back over and uh, pull it just to make some sort of finger in the end, but to be fair, it don't look too bad. Part of the job, eh? Perfect. So my lad's got the uh, post all in place now, and what a difference it makes. Just turns it into an actual building just by having a little bit of structure on the outside. Awesome, eh? Look at that. And I actually quite like these uh, spike tops, not that they're staying because they're going to get chopped off, but look a bit gothic. So I'll just use my stone saw and I bought a load of these uh, Indian paving flags, cut them in half and then what I'm going to do with these is use them as the uh, uprights. So I'm going to set them in a curve all the way around, somewhere like that. So today's job is going to be setting all these edging stones all the way around the perimeter of the building. Just set on this internal face, um, tight up against the actual um, metal post holders. What I've done is uh, we've dug like a bit of a trench all the way around, which is just enough just to uh, take a little bit of a pad of concrete um, in which we're going to actually inset these uh, um, edging stones into. Um, so once they've gone off a bit we can level the floor out and then uh, move on to the next stage which is probably actually putting a floor right the way through this uh, building. So let's get on with that then. So I've got all this uh, perimeter done, all the way around, which uh, is really nice actually, it makes it feel like it's more encased and it's becoming something. But next job is, at these end sections here, I can't actually finish off the last two bits until I've got these uh, two big door posts in. So there's this one to fit on this side. So we've dug a trench for that. And uh, there's that slightly longer one there which just has to be set slightly deeper into this hole. So, concrete mixed. Let's get on with that then, see how it goes. It's gonna be tricky uh, manhandling them in there. Anyways. 
if you put it under there, exactly where that's gone, that's it, a bit further in, and we're going to lever it up. That's it. That's it, perfect. Hold it there. Come over a little bit further. Right, slow it down. Right, need it a little bit tighter in, but nearly there. Right, go and I'll balance it. That's it, stay there. Um, can you just twist it that way so it'll move? That's it, perfect. Perfect. Right, just hold it there a sec. Play it through and see where we are with it. Being a perfectionist. Mm. So this is door post number one set in place. So dropped it into the ground about eight inches, and then we've got a fully concrete pad all the way around that, which is going to support it. And because it's not going to take any pressure from any sides at all. Or maybe somebody drunk just leaning against it. Um, it should be absolutely solid there. And look at that against that post. So it does look pretty good. Check it for level. I am quite a perfectionist with these things, but there we go. That's what I like to see. Right, on to the next one then. It's going to be a bit trickier because we've got to try and make sure that it's uh, the same height as that one. I uh, need to get a couple of these stones out I decided because um, I'm going to flag this floor so they're just going to get in the way. Um, I couldn't lift this one up so I came up with this master plan. Simple roll and it works a treat. Effortless. <laughs> It's all about using your brain, eh? Well, I've had a good day today. Got all these edging stones set all the way around um, and set the two posts for the entrance way and they look awesome, I absolutely love that and having these set on the outside just allows like um, a way of eyeing through and being able to level this inside so I've got all this uh, floor pretty much level now which uh, hopefully we can flag on top of so my aim is really to keep it watertight in here so what I'm going to do is actually put a waterproof membrane down first on this floor um, and I'm not going to hardcore it because I don't want to lift it up anymore so what I'm going to do is just solid bed on top of the uh, waterproof membrane that's all um, it can't go anywhere it's just going to act as a raft and just sit on top of this as it is so yes looking good well happy with it and honestly what a space it's ultra cool as this it's going to be absolutely awesome when it's finished so exciting every day is just uh, getting a little bit closer
So one of the problems I've got is to find a way to attach all of the roof spars into that central ring. So to make or manufacture a ring, it would have to normally be done probably with uh, some thick ply and just cut out uh, with a jigsaw, just lots of uh, circles basically, and then glue them all together so you, you form one solid piece. But that takes forever and I was trying to think of something that I could use um, which would be easier for me to do. Um, now I don't know if this is going to be easier but, <laughs> but I have found the coolest thing to use. Um, so I'm going to uh, take you outside now and I'll show you exactly what my thoughts are. How cool is this? This is my mud terrain tyre, my BF Goodrich mud terrain tyre off my old Land Rover Defender, which I had for about 12 years. What a discovery now, not quite as cool. But um, what a fantastic piece to use. It's um, solid, um, it's not gonna rot, which is a brilliant thing. And obviously the main thing is it's round. So exactly what I'm looking for. Um, so what I need to do is, which is gonna be the tricky part, is to drill holes into this, which are gonna be big enough to slot in the, my roof spars. So I can adjust the end of my roof spars by just carving them down a little bit, but um, obviously I need to cut some circular holes in here. So hopefully that is possible. But um, I mean, just that's awesome, isn't it? Absolutely awesome. So yeah, let's see how we can get on with this and uh, try cut into it. Mutter entire, eh? Brilliant. So I've just pulled a string line down the center there. Now with a piece of wood, it's a straight edge. I'm just gonna uh, dissect this now into quarters using a square along the straight edge of that line. So I'm just going to uh, guess for the minute that's square and then we need to know that this is in the uh, centre point of the tyre. That's actually perfect I think. No, no, other side of it. 198 is my measurement and that is actually perfect there. So we're going to mark that, mark that and then I'm going to do it again and just keep going. So now that I've got my quarter points, I've made myself a compass, which is a piece of string, a knot on one end, and then I've just tied my pencil to that end. So hold the knot on this uh, ridge here, which is exactly the same all the way around. And then I'm going to just draw myself a little arc there. Bring it to the next one draw another arc and where these two uh, marks cross is exactly dissecting that in half so all I have to do work my way around and keep uh, drawing these marks on so that splits it into eight and now I have to double it up so I need to do exactly the same for the next one but firstly, just find my straight edge. It's like a banana, this thing. So I'm just gonna put that on those two marks there. Then we can just draw through. So now I've got my marks, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just pop this uh, level on through the two marks. And then I can just eye it through to exactly where I need to drill this hole. So once I've got that mark, I'm going to go in the centre there using magic eye. And then, <laughs> let's have a go at cutting this. I think this is going to be a complete nightmare, but we will soon find out. Let's get this hole started off. Yeah, so that's going to be a pain. 
<laughs> these tires are made really well so obviously you've got the external rubber and then inside there's loads and loads and loads of little tiny wire mesh um, lines so I'm just gonna have to force my way through it That's the other issue. Being rubber, just wanting to grip it. You've got to be just a bit careful with that because when this twists, it can really rip your wrist around. Well, we're through. Let me show you this though. You can see exactly what I mean by that. Got a lot of metal there I've got to cut through. Only 15 more to go. So now I have got a hole cut in there. I'm going to show you my plan with it. So I'm going to use some 3B2. This is 2B2, but I'm going to use 3B2 um, for the roof spars. So I've just carved the end of this um, just simply into a circle. And that obviously is going to slot into the hole in here. So 16 of these. I'm going to just shove in there we go it fits all right and then the good thing about this is once it's in position there obviously we need to form an angle on the roof so as that's brought down to the right angle it actually locks it in position there so that will not pull out in that position at all um, which is brilliant so this whole system is going to be really really secure the only thing is now I've got 15 more holes to cut and I've got 16 of these to carve <laughs> well that was a complete chew drilling all these holes into this tire but I've done it and they're uh, all in and sorted you can see uh, how nasty drilling that would have been so next job is to hoi it up there somehow and then um, get these uh, roof uh, spars to sort of sit into it and then, um, you know, hopefully my crazy theory will work and it'll support everything. <laughs> Who knows, eh? The tyre is going to sit on top of this scaffold I've built. So this is right in the centre of the building. And what I'll do is I'll use a, a plumb bob just to make sure it's dead on centre. And then what I'll do is, is fit 16 of these uh, roof spars into the holes on the actual tyre. So what I've done is carved this using my axe and a little knife and um, I've got all these to do. I might run the belt sander around it but um, to be honest it's actually pretty good. I think that will do the trick. To say I've just used uh, these two babies. So with this I'm just going to choose the end that's got no knots in it so obviously it's a lot easier to cut. First job, I need to take off quite a lot of the uh, one side of this. Once I've got it somewhere near, I'm just going to drop onto this little baby, and this is brilliant. This is uh, it's the Mora um, little carving knife. It's just brilliant for whittling with. basic shape there so I'm just gonna uh, see how close it is to fitting inside yeah that's not gonna be far off so all I'm gonna do is just uh, smooth this round and make it as uh, round as possible but it's uh, hopefully a pretty good fit straight away So 
there we go something like that Japanese production line now <laughs> let's get them all done so here's the process that's my template now this bit here obviously all these knots I can't do much with that so what I'm gonna do cut through there and then all this section here there's barely anything in it so at least that'll carve quite easily pencil line and it just gives me a, a bit of a guide of where I can actually start chopping to down to using a little knife and that does not look far off so what I've been doing is just dropping it into the tyre Give it a couple of twists and then uh, the rubber off the tyre is just putting a bit of a mark on just to show where it's actually coming to. So now I can smooth it all off and just make sure that we're about right with it. Simple. <laughs> and tiring, my hand's killing me. <laughs> Last little bit just to finish off. What a mess eh? All this all done by hand and my hand is hurting perfect there we go then all done just might need a little bit of sanding off just for that final fit when I put them all together I just use the Helco work axe there. I've got a few of these ones and they are pretty much the same as the Grand Sports Brooks ones and the Wetterlings axes of which I have a couple of each. Um, and they're a bit cheaper so not a bad shout if you're just fancying a, a decent sort of bushcraft axe. I also use the uh, Mora carving knife which is they're about 20 quid I think and honestly absolutely awesome. They are brilliant. I mean look all that just from using those two tools but as I say that that knife definitely worth the money so after a couple of days of rain and one haircut I've offered a couple of these spars up into this tire just sat on that scaffold and um, just to see how it's gonna sort of work and what the headspace is like and everything and to be honest it is perfect it's absolutely brilliant so as you can see I've just uh, posted a couple of those posts through the holes and then um, you have to put them in sort of a, a, a straight angle and then once you put them in you can then angle it down and at that point it just locks in position it's absolutely brilliant way of doing it so I need to center that tire now so the way I'm going to do that is by using a plumb bob which doesn't often get used nowadays but I'll uh, show you what I've got for that it's pretty cool so to center this up I'm going to use a plumb bob so I need to find a central point, so I've made a cross out of uh, some just off cuts of rubbish and I'm going to sit that on top of the tyre and what I've done is I've cut a hole in the centre of that which allows me to fed, feed some uh, string through and then um, off that string I have got the coolest plumb bob ever just watch, ow, watch these screws that are sticking out look at that baby so I've had this for quite a few years really, it's just an ornament in my house never used it until now so just uh, unscrews there you, just so you can put a new piece of string in 
and the weight of it is pretty industrious is that baby so let's have a go eh there we have the cross set with that hole exactly in the center of that tire if I just follow this uh, line down you'll see this awesome plumb bob working hard look at that awesome eh absolutely amazing so I put a dot on the uh, central part of this it's slightly on the pieces that piece of wood there so I've just uh, had to put a level on it and just guess exactly where the center is but as you can see I'm hanging there you go showing that it can move but it just reset itself and we are within about three millimeters of that so that is perfect minus three millimeters so we have that set exactly in the center so what I've done is I just uh, brought this one in and I put a temporary screw in there now I've set this external height from here down to the floor at 1.5 meters um, just because material lengths generally or widths come in 1.5 meters so if I was ever to wrap this round I can just grab a piece of material and just uh, wrap it all the way around this so this 1.5 meter height here actually works really well the floor will come up a couple of inches but me stood here at six foot tall it um, fits me in pretty much to the edge so absolutely awesome really um, the other thing is as well if I leave these long um, I can then cut these off um, just to suit and get them all exactly the same all the way around so what I need to do now is put a mark on this post exactly where this is going to strike it and then I need to transfer that to all the other posts so I've got exactly the same height all the way around and I'll do that using my little laser level I'll show you how that works so this little laser level it's got a uh, horizontal and a vertical laser on it so you can fire out at all angles really so if I just show you the laser now which is actually on there we go so it doesn't matter where you stand I don't want it in my eyes really it's firing this laser out so it's a great way of transferring one level around a room so if I just show you onto this post so there we go that's my mark and I can come onto the next one here and I can transfer the mark onto this post and keep going round set my bevel just to uh, hold that plumb there and set my bevel to the uh, angle of the dangle and then what I can do then is just walk around and transfer it to the next post and all I'll do is, is just eye it through to my line hold this plumb and then I can draw through it so I've cut two of these posts and this is my plan pretty much we're just doing like a bit of a lap joint I guess and what I'm doing is I'm gonna allow that to sit perfectly on this angle just so it can take a bit of weight directly down but also I'm gonna put two holes in here which are gonna clamp this together with a couple of bolts and obviously I want it to be able to be taken down um, so it's not a permanent structure and just by putting a couple of bolts on it's the easiest way to do it So I've got to offer it up, every one is just slightly different I've noticed. So I'll find my mark. A little bit of pressure on the post to push it to its final resting place. And then, pencil line through. to draw a line on a curve eye it through and just allow that to rest on there while I get this post out 
And now I've got my mark, I'm going to do my cut. Well, it's starting to take shape. Put about half of them in now. So, I'm gonna put a temporary screw in each one of these and then hopefully take that scaffold out and then just allow it to sit where it needs to sit. And then if everything seems okay, I'm hoping, then um, what I'll do is I'll double bolt each one of these so then at least those bolts can be taken off at any point and you know whip it all out, drop it all. As I say, it's meant to be a temporary structure so it's cool isn't it it's really cool Look at this. 